Have you ever been betrayed by a loved one? Disappointed by a trusted one? Can I cl come closer? Have you ever been betrayed by your pastor or by your elder or churchmate? How did you handle the betrayal? Join me in this series of programs as we look at the 144,000 saints of God who are going to be translated alive into the kingdom of heaven, how they handle betrayal. For there is much betrayal predicted in the Bible for the people who are living in these last days. God bless you so much as we go through our theme for this online present truth feast, which is running for every Sabbath from 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. until the 7th of November, consecutive Sabbaths. Our, our theme is called Calvary and the 144,000. You can be one of the members of the 144, the blessed group. You can elect yourself into this group and as you pray for the characteristics of these people. Let's look at these 144,000 the blessed people. I pray that I may be one of them. My name is Evangelist Irvin Nyatanga, the speaker and director of the Show Me God Ministries. We thank you for worshiping with us, for telling your friends to crowd around that screen that we may study together. We are going to pray now before we delve into our subject. Father in heaven, we do thank you in the name of Jesus, for giving us yet another opportunity to study your word together with my brothers and sisters who are worshiping with us and participating from different locations around the world. Bless each one of them, Lord, and meet them at their point of need. Send your Holy Spirit to write these truths with a pen of fire into our hearts and prepare us for the coming of Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. Show Me God Ministry is committed to preaching nothing but the present truth. We need the present truth. Things are not normal around us. Prophecies fulfilling fast. Let us keep our, our heads uh, looking up to heaven where our salvation is coming from. Our topic for today is too powerful. It's simply entitled, The Great Betrayal. The great betrayal in the 144,000. As usual, we begin with a quotation from the Testimonies of the Spirit of Prophecy. We look at Testimonies, Volume 4, page 374. 
it says here, it would be well to spend a thoughtful hour each day reviewing the life of Christ from the manger to Calvary. We should take it point by point, let the imagination vividly grasp each scene, especially the closing ones of his earthly life. By thus contemplating his teachings, contemplating his sufferings, and the infinite sacrifice made by him for the redemption of our race, we may strengthen our faith, quicken our love, and become more deeply imbued with the spirit which sustained our Savior. All those who aspire to be in the 144,000, here is our duty clearly spelled out by the pain of inspiration. In these last days, when prophecy is rapidly fulfilling, when every headline on any news channel is speaking doom, disaster, we are asked by the Spirit of God to spend one thoughtful hour each day contemplating on the life of Jesus, especially the closing scenes of his life, Gethsemane to Calvary, all the events in between the death, the resurrection, and the ascension. We are told who will be great beneficiaries. We shall find power and strength, and the Holy Spirit will come upon us to imbue us with the power and to sustain us uh, because we are going to be encountering similar experiences like our Savior, but to a lesser extent. The great betrayal. The 144,000 are men and women who are obeying the counsels of the Spirit and spend more time contemplating, meditating, point by point, the life of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, uh, the closing scenes of his life. Let's go to the book of Revelation, where we normally begin and share the vision that John saw. Revelation 14, verse 1 says, And I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on Mount Zion, and with him a hundred and forty-four thousand, having his father's name written in their foreheads. Revelation 14, verse 4 says, These are they which were not defiled with women, for they are virgins. These are they which follow the lamb whithersoever he goeth. These, are, these were redeemed from the earth among men, being the first fruits unto God and unto the Lamb. We explained in the previous presentation, last Sabbath, presentation number one of the series, the details about them being virgins, what it means. I'm not going to delve into that. But I love to emphasize this point that John saw the characteristics of these people as the ones who followed the Lamb whithersoever he goes. They follow him in his disappointments. They follow him in his betrayal. They follow him in Gethsemane. That's why we began with the school of Gethsemane for every end time remnant person of God. Let's look at what happened in Gethsemane. The 144,000 contemplate these scenes. The disciples were invited by Jesus to join him in Gethsemane. Unfortunately, they slept. But fortunately, the 144,000 will not sleep. They contemplate the life of Jesus. As soon as Jesus had agonized, prayed uh, almost all night in Gethsemane, then this sin came. Matthew chapter 26 verse 15 says, And said unto them, What will he give me? And I will deliver him unto you. And they covenanted with him for thirty pieces of silver. Verse 16 of the same chapter, Matthew 26, 16 says, And from that time he sought an opportunity to betray him. Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve disciples. As soon as Jesus was just about to finish his prayer in Gethsemane, appeared with a mob. But he went to the high priests and he said, What will you give me? If I hand him over to you, they agreed 
for 30 pieces of silver. Judas, whose feet had been washed by Jesus in that Holy Communion. Judas walked with Jesus three and a half years and was taught the theology of heaven by the Son of God. Judas, who saw every miracle of Jesus, the dead being raised, the sick being healed, he saw Jesus walk on water. Judas, a Sabbath keeper, in the inner circle, saw all these things, but did not love Jesus. He sought for an opportunity to betray him. Friend, Jesus said to the disciples, follow me, come with me to get some money. The 144,000 follow Christ, and they are witnesses of his betrayal. And they watched how he responded to the betrayal. I want to say the truth. The Bible says here, yeah, I mean the testimony says, uh, he looked for an opportune time to betray Christ. Judas loved money too much. Him being a Sabbath keeper, him being a theological student, him being a witness of all the miracles of Jesus, the resurrection of the dead, Lazarus and everything, he loved money more than Christ. Judas is a type of men and women today who are in the borders of God's church, who are not converted after Christ, but are in his church and love not Christ, but love money more than Jesus. Judas uh, was looking for a right opportunity to trade his master. And I want to say the right opportunity for the betrayal of the 144,000 like their master is the declaration of the National Sunday Law. You are going to see the Judases among God's people. They are there right now. The right circumstance is coming. The National Sunday Law, the declaration of the New World Order, One World Religion, then you shall see Judases amongst us taking their position. Something I pity Judas for is that he loved money to the point that he did not only trade goods, he ended up trading souls of men. Judas ended up seeking to make blood money. Friend, I want to caution you. If you would be in the remnant, the 144,000 who are going to be translated alive, pray that you may not idolize money, but idolize Christ. Christ, number one, everything else. But if money becomes number one, Judas was moved by Satan to auction his Lord. And so we're told, let's contemplate the closing scenes of, of Christ's life. Because similar incidences will take place. The 144,000 who follow Jesus, even through betrayal by close brethren, close church members, close relatives, because they are stepping in the steps of their master. You don't need to quit church. You don't need to give up the faith because you've been betrayed by a false brother or a false pastor or a false elder. Remember Judas. That's the blessing we get when we contemplate the life of Jesus. Blood money. I don't know what type of money you have, friend. Blessed are you if you have clean money. The day of judgment is coming soon. Don't trade in the Judas steps. Trade in the steps of Jesus. Early writings, page 166 says, his love, that is Judas, his love of money led him to agree to betray his Lord into the hands of his bitterest enemies. Satan was working directly through Judas and in the midst of the impressive scene of the Last Supper, the traitor was devising plans to betray his master, Jesus Christ. Friend, is it not a shame to go through the entire course of the theological uh, study at the feet of Jesus only to come out with a hard heart? When everybody else's heart was melted, the 11 disciples, they loved Jesus more. Only one came out with a hard heart and the devil used it. I saw that in these last days. Satan 
does not lay candidates to use, even among God's people. Friend, if you tread in the steps of Judas, you shall betray the brethren in the house of God and betray Christ. Already today, there are those who are betraying Christ and his Sabbath principle for money. Are you not connected to Judas? Do you think you'll be in the kingdom of heaven when you are like Judas? You need to repent, personally examine yourself because Jesus is coming again. Men and women exist among God's people who are walking in the steps of Judas, whose love for money exceeds their love for Jesus. Men and women who worship money more than God. Men and women who are betraying Christ for financial gain. This is said, do not fulfill this prophecy. If you walk in the steps of Judas, you shall elect yourself out of the disciples of Jesus of the end time. You will vote yourself out of the 144,000. You have nobody to blame but yourself. Do not trade your brothers for money. Don't auction the brethren. <laughs> Elder, don't auction the church for money. Excuse me, pastor. Don't auction the church for money. Don't auction the truth for money, sister. Don't auction the Ten Commandments for cash. This is trading in the steps of Judas. Don't auction the Sabbath for cash. Be faithful to God. The devil knows that his time is, is almost done and is now hunting right inside the church. He has already recruited some people who are serving his purpose within the borders of God's house. And God knows about it. And I want to thank God for Jesus who invites all of us to contemplate on his life because what befell him to a great extent is, going, is, going, is beginning to befall us to a lesser extent. And the many people will be shaken out of the remnant, or remnant church because they have not looked at the example of Christ, how he behaved under these circumstances. Today, the devil has a plan. He has infiltrated the church of God. Like he infiltrated the circles of the disciples. He would use Judas to betray. He would use some whom he has recruited in these last days to sell out, to betray, sell out, and to market even the church of God to the enemies. Satan has never failed to find agents to use within God's church. He has never. He had Cain back then. He had Achan in the camp. He had Naaman's servant who coveted, uh, I mean, um, he had Elisha's servant, Gehazi, who coveted gold and silver until he got the leprosy of Naaman. Throughout the centuries, Satan never runs out. In the days of Nehemiah, he had Sanballat and Tobias to trouble the church of God. I want to assure you in these last days, he has gained experience for over 6,000 years in the great controversy. He has got more Judases among God's people who will betray their brethren. Judas was infiltrated into the circles of the disciples to serve Satan's purpose. My brother, as you listen to this message, I hope you are one of the 144,000. I, I don't like to believe that you, you came into the church of God brought in by Satan to, to, to trouble the house of God and to persecute your fellow brothers for money. The New Testament church talks of brothers infiltrated in it. You know the New Testament? It talks of wolves in sheep's clothing among the flock. The Apostle, Apostle Paul warned about this. The devil is always in the business of bringing in Judases to betray God's faithful people. In these last days, the 144,000 experience what Jesus experienced. But they remain strong and faithful to Christ, holding on to him. Don't worry whether the number is literal or symbolic. I don't think it's important. Pray that you may be those who follow the Lamb whithersoever he goes, through betrayals, in Gethsemane, through trials, follow Christ and you become part of the 
144,000. The Bible warns of infiltration. It's a reality. It warns about the tears that spring up among the good crop. There are tears all over today among God's people. People who pretend to love God's work, to love the advancement of the Advent message while doing it down, while in secret meetings with the enemies of the church. The Bible talks about goats among sheep. Infiltration is a reality. Satan has strategically placed certain people in the house of God. Some even occupy positions. Some have holy titles. We think they are brethren, but they are not. They love money more than Jesus. They can do anything for money and betray Jesus. And we are told we are going to see them. their true colors when the Sunday law passes. I'm going to show you this. I hope you are not a goat, my sister, among the sheep of God. I hope you are not a wolf, my brother, among the sheep of God. I hope you are following in the steps of Christ, whithersoever he goes, not in the steps of Judas. I hope you are a servant of God, an instrument of God, to preach the three angels' messages, than an instrument of the devil to weaken the church and persecute the brethren. The Great Controversy, book, page 608, has this quotation to say. I strongly recommend this book to you. If you would be in the 144,000, you and your household, please, this is your daily book that you should study. The Great Controversy, page 608, says, as the storm, that is the National Sunday Law, as the storm approaches, a large class who have professed the faith in the third angel's message, but have not been sanctified through obedience to the truth, will abandon their position and join the opposition. Men of talent, men of pleasing address, that's eloquent brothers, who when they stand on the pulpit, men they deliver. Men of talent and eloquent and pleasing address, who once rejoiced in the truth, employ their powers to deceive and mislead souls, they become the most bitter enemies, Judas-like, most bitter enemies of their former brethren. When the Sabbath keepers are brought before the courts to answer for their faith, these apostate brethren and sisters, apostate, are the most efficient agents of Satan to misrepresent and accuse their former brothers and by false reports and insinuations to stir up the rulers against them. In this time of persecution, the faith of the Lord's servants will be severely tried. Let's unpack that quotation. Who are the end time betrayers of God's people? The Judases of the last days. Number one, they profess believing in the present truth or the three angels' messages. But they are not sanctified. They don't obey. They are only speaking the truth, but their lives are contrary to what they profess. These are candidates for Satan to use as instruments against God's church. Number two, we are unpacking the quotation. Men of talent and pleasing address. Friend, being talented is not, is not synonymous with holiness. Singing well, preaching well is not synonymous with holiness. Even Lucifer is talented in music and other areas, but he's not holy. These people are not sanctified. They don't obey God's laws. They remain in the church. They don't want to go out, but they have a mission there to betray the servants of God like Judas. Men think them to be good crop, but Jesus knows their tears. Men of pleasing address, don't be deceived by talent. These will turn to be the most bitter enemies of God's people and will misrepresent them when the servants of God, the 144,000, are brought before the courts to answer for their faith. God have mercy. I hope you are not one of them. These brothers and sisters are unsanctified Sabbath keepers. They profess to keep the Sabbath of the Lord, but are not sanctified. They don't obey. When it is convenient, they break it for money. Men of talent, they tend to be the most bitter enemies 
of God's people. What a terrible prophecy that was given to Ellen White concerning the last days. One of the things that touches me from the great controversy says, these apostates, in the words of the great controversy book, these apostates, unsanctified brethren, I pray that I may be sanctified. Pray that you may be sanctified. Pray that you may not fulfill this prophecy. You see, when Jesus said to his disciples, I tell you the truth, one of you will betray me. They all were concerned. They said, Lord, surely not I. Surely not I. They didn't want to fulfill this prophecy. Friend, if the disciples asked and said, surely not I, Lord. You don't have to be neutral about this. If you have been walking in the wrong steps, I urge you to repent. Hellfire is closer. The judgments of God are looming fast, hanging upon your head. Change your course. Believe God. Love the church and the brethren and pull together with the people of God. You will be in the 144,000. Friend, there's a day when you'll be buried and all the money that you crave for will be, will be imparted to other people who never work for it. Friend, will you betray Jesus for money? Will you betray the church for money? Will you betray your brethren for money? Says the apostates will insinuate false reports and misrepresent and accuse their fellow brethren before the courts when the Sunday law is passed. Manufacturing stories, lying, smear campaigning their own brethren. When Jesus says, love your own uh, neighbor as yourself, smear campaign is not love. It is the spirit of the accuser, who is known as the accuser of the brethren. Said indeed, Ellen White says, the Judas, like in the last days, they are going to stir up rulers. They will stir up rulers to arrest and persecute their former brethren. Friend, Satan knows his own in the house of God. Friend, if you cherish the spirit of hatred against the brethren, you are a fine candidate for Satan. And uh, you have elected yourself out of the kingdom of heaven. You will not stand on Mount Zion with the Lamb. You are not following the Lamb with the soever he goes, but following the devil with the soever he goes. Please do not spend three and a half years with Jesus at his feet only to become an active agent of Satan. You see, some tears are actually baptized. They go through the waters, but there's a mission to betray the church of God. Interesting. Let's look at this passage. Matthew chapter 26, verse 46 says, as Judas finished, Jesus finished praying in the Garden of Gethsemane, that night of wrestling, he says, Matthew 26, 46, Rise, let us be going. Behold, he is at hand that doth betray me. Arise, the betrayer is near. All of a sudden, Judas went missing from the 12 disciples, and he had gone somewhere. What does it say in, in verse 47, Matthew, of the same chapter? And while he had spake, lo, Judas, one of the 12, came, with him a great multitude with swords and staves from the chief priests and the elders of the people. While others were pray were, were with Jesus in the Gethsemane field, Judas had gone, secret meetings with the enemies of Christ. Plotted, auctioned his master. He had been paid. Now he came to betray. Brothers and sisters, Ellen White says, in these last days, God is looking for people who cannot be bought or sold for truth. Men who stand true to duty as a needle is to the poor. These are the 144,000. Friend, can you be bought to betray the church? You receive silver and gold for the souls of God's people. Study this word. I want you to imagine where we are. How will you answer on the judgment day before your God? When he shall require it from your hands. The betrayer came. 
The disciples were shocked. They thought he was still their brother. But he came, listen to what he said when he came with his mission. Now he that betrayed him gave them a sign saying, Whomsoever I shall kiss, that is he. Hold him fast. When a man is full of the spirit of Satan, all moisture of love and sympathy is dried up by the devil. And he acts as a brutal beast. He says concerning his master who taught him three and a half years, the man that I kiss is the one. This is a killer kiss. False Sabbath keeper called Judas gave a killer kiss to betray his Lord. And he collected 30 pieces of silver. The 144,000 followed the lamb whithersoever he goes. Through betrayal they follow him. As their false kisses upon their cheeks from false brethren, they keep following Jesus. False smiles, false handshakes, false uh, fellowship. They are not discouraged. They don't quit the faith. They know that the master walked that path and they are stepping in his steps. I want to warn you, friend, if you are going to be among the 144,000, brace up for what is coming. Or already you are experiencing this. Remain focused. Jesus went through it for you. He will take you through. Now Jesus is in heaven. Killer kisses are too many among us today, especially among uh, the professed believers. There are many false brothers and false sisters with a false love. A false advent kiss of betrayal is rampant today. Hypocritical brethren and sisters, they are infiltrated in God's house. 144,000 in the great betrayal. I want to thank God for the entire message. That's why we need the present truth. Jesus warned the final generation. He warned us about the betrayals of the end. One of the greatest signs that indicate that Jesus is even at the doors is the betrayal of God's faithful children by their fellow believers who are unsanctified. We are a mixed multitude. That's the essence of the message. Who are the 144,000? They walk in his steps. Follow Christ with us wherever he goes. Matthew chapter 24 verse 7 says, The precursor to the betrayals of the last days. What the 144,000 must face and brace up to. Listen to this and you'll be shocked. Matthew 24 verse 7 says, For nation shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines, pestilences, earthquakes in diverse places. Verse 9, Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you, and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Then shall they deliver you. Why are the 144,000 persecuted and betrayed in these last days? Who is actually going to be uh, uh, delivering God's people? The question I want to ask you is, in, uh, who delivered Jesus into the hands of his enemies? If a history repeats itself, then you know the answer. You know, I thank God for this study. God has revealed it to me in these studies that History will be repeated. The betrayers of God's people in the last days are not in the secular world. They are in the house of God. They are the end type Judases. They will deliver. What will you give me if I deliver? He says pestilences, famines, disasters. These are now precursors to the great betrayal. People are now offended by what's happening in the world. And says, now among God's people, emerge Judas is, when these situations are in the world, pestilences, plagues, economic challenges, then will emerge the deliverers. Who will deliver God's people? What, are they are not delivering them to salvation. They are delivering them to be afflicted. 
they are selling out on their brethren. And they start hating their own brethren. So in the days of outbreaks of things like COVID, challenges in the world today, we are expecting the next move, betrayal by many. The love of men will grow cold. The love of people who used to love Jesus will become deep freezers, cold as Judas' heart, frozen by Satan and his spirit, and they turn against their own brethren. The Bible says, why will they hate the 144,000? John says <laughs> in the Revelation, I saw them having the Father's name written on their foreheads. So Jesus says, they shall hate you, kill you, persecute you for my name's sake. That's all. The names of Jesus, the name of God is synonymous with his character. Because of their honesty, purity, and integrity, and holiness, and Jesus' likeness, they are persecuted. For Satan hates the image of Jesus in his perfection. He sees it in the 144,000. So he wants everybody on earth here not to reflect Jesus. So this final generation of believers having his name in their forehead, his character, his attitude, his humility, his purity, makes them a target. They have the seal of God in their foreheads. And for this, they are hated. Some are accused of being trying to act holy. You want to be smarter. You know what I'm saying? If you had such words, the devil is bored to see the image of Jesus forming in you. Friend, if your character is unformed the Jesus way, the devil doesn't bother about you. Actually, he actually uses you to persecute those who are sealed. So uh, don't be surprised, friend, if you are going through times like this. Don't marvel. Don't quit faith, the faith. Keep following Jesus. We are almost getting home. The Lord will not allow it to go on like that. He will come in at a certain point in time. We know the end of Judas. He didn't, he didn't enjoy the money. He threw it down, overwhelmed by demons. He hung himself. The time is coming when all end time Judas is among God's people will be hanged by God's justice. Judas will be missing in the kingdom of heaven. So will the end time Judas is be missing. Says in these last days when there are pestilences, plagues, famines, verse 10 of Matthew 24, says, then shall many be offended. Instead of seeing the signs of the times growing in the faith, they become offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. The hardships in the world are driving the remnant 144,000 to love one another. But if one is not electing himself in this number by following Christ, the more trouble abounds upon the earth, pestilences, plagues. The lost are coming, are being filled with the spirit of hatred and envy against God's people. Friend, the wheat and the tares are already amongst us. Keep looking up to Jesus. Keep following him whithersoever he goes. The 144,000 and the great betrayal. Matthew 10 verse 21 says, And the brother shall deliver up his brother to death, and the father shall deliver the child, and the children shall rise up against their parents and cause them to be put to death. Matthew 24, verse 22, He shall be hated of all men for my name's sake, but he that endures to the end shall be saved. The Bible predicts social chaos in the family circles. Children who believe will be persecuted by unbelieving parents. Children who keep the Sabbath will be persecuted by non-Sabbath-keeping parents. Are you with me? And also, daughter shall betray mother, mother, daughter. You know, the Bible, is, Jesus is giving a picture of social and religious chaos. That must burst upon the earth just before Jesus comes. But all those who are in the 144,000 end-time people of God are going to be on the receiving end of this terrible backlash as the devil tries to separate them from Christ, but they will not yield the faith. They will endure to the end, and God will honor them and rescue them when Jesus comes and they will stand with the Lamb on Mount Zion. Let's summarize that. Just before Jesus comes, 
The Bible prophecy is telling us there will be an uprising in the world and intense hatred against godly and uprisings in the religious circle. The remnant in every family and church will feel the heat. Here are they that follow the Lamb whithersoever he goes. In the heat, in the furnace. In Gethsemane, sweating it in prayer as it were drops of blood. Gethsemane school of prayer. Gethsemane school of betrayal. They follow. If you miss out on enlisting in the school of Gethsemane, you are going to give negative reactions. Reactions which Jesus never gave. When he was betrayed and kissed by this betrayer, he was not violent. I know some brethren who claim to be waiting for Christ who are terribly violent. They don't have a character that resembles the lamb who is gentle because you cannot emit these responses when the Holy Spirit does not dwell in you. The spirit of violence is never the spirit of God. Examine yourself. Is your name written in the book of life? Or you are a candidate for hellfire together with the devil? The kingdom of God knows no violence. When he was betrayed, he committed himself to God. When the one foot four thousand are betrayed, they commit themselves to God. John the Baptist was put in prison by Herod. He was hated, put to the guillotine. And uh, he was wondering, and he sent his disciples to inquire, could this be the Christ? Finally, he understood. And Jesus said to him, Blessed is he who shall, who shall not be offended in me. And John understood, and he followed Christ in persecution. John was hated for his purity, so are the 144,000. John was hated for his straight messages. He condemned the adulterous relationship of Herod and Herodias. For that, he was persecuted. Friend, do you know that? In this world, there are people who are keeping records of every sermon that have been preached. They are only waiting for an opportunity to get the end time Johns for preaching a straight message. Friend, the devil is, is, not, is, is not short of manpower to use, even within God's house. John endured the trial of his faith, so will the remnant of God, the 144,000. Christ was an example uh, to the disciples and is an example to us today. Take up your cross, follow me, says Jesus, even in the school of betrayal. But at the end, God will give you a reward. I want to conclude. Let me read a testimony called Last Day Events by Ellen White, the servant of God, page 156. She says, We have far more to fear from within, that is within the church, than from outside the secular world. The hindrances to strength and success are far greater from the church itself than from the world. Judas was not a drunkard. He was not in the secular world. He was an, a man in the inner circles. I fear what we are told. She says, in these last days, we must now learn to let our hands off the hands of men and to put our hands in the hands of Jesus because many people are proving to be untrustworthy. You shall know them by their fruit the wheat and the tares. But I pray that you may be among the 144,000 who will follow Christ even through betrayal and not give up the faith. As the Sunday law is coming and looming, there will be great betrayals by men in God's house. Some at even high ranks will betray the church and sell the brethren, sell off the church, sell off the ministers, sell off church members, but God will not fail his own people. The Bible says in Isaiah 41, 10, Fear not, I'm with you. I will help you. I will strengthen you. And I will lead you through the valley of the shadow of death. And Jesus will take his remnant on Mount Zion in heaven, the bliss of the faithful. But woe to the end time Judas. If you have been doing this, walking in the steps of Judas, I pray that you may reconsider and humble yourself 
and pray for the spirit of love and follow the Lamb. My sheep hear my voice and they follow me. Follow Christ. I want to pray with you today. If you're going through hard times, if you've been betrayed by close relatives, friends, for Jesus' sake, you are blessed. You'll stand with Jesus one day on Mount Zion. This is the package of all those who are godly and Jesus-like. I want to thank God for this presentation. Is it your desire tonight that you say, Lord, count me in among the 144,000. Help me go through the betrayals I'm experiencing. Help me to keep following Jesus and not to sidetrack. Remember me, Lord, in your kingdom. Somebody sent me a message and said, what Judas failed to learn in three and a half years, the thief on the cross learned in a few hours that Jesus is worth following, and he gave his life to him, and he was promised paradise. Three and a half years of theology. How many years have you stayed in church? How many years have you been elected to church offices, and you still hate the brethren? You still love money more than Jesus. Are you as hardened as Judas? Give your life to Jesus. He will change your life. We are praying now. Father in heaven, we do thank you for speaking to us in a solemn way. Thank you for Jesus who conquered the devil in Gethsemane and gave us an example throughout his life. Help us to contemplate on his life as we see the signs of the times fast fulfilling. I pray for my brother, for my sister who is committing his life tonight, saying, Lord, forgive me. I've been hating the brethren. I've been walking in the wrong steps. I Submit my heart to you. Change me, Lord, and help me to be a sheep that follows the master. Stepping where he stepped, give me the victory, Lord, and lead me to Mount Zion. In Jesus' name, thank you, Lord, for blessing that sister, that brother. Bring us back again next Sabbath, same time as we pursue the series, Calvary and the 144,000. In Jesus' name, amen.
I hope you have been blessed, my brothers and sisters, by this presentation. Please go and study the life of Jesus. If you can take a book called The Desire of Ages, the last chapters of his life, you will get the courage and strength. Friends, we encourage you to tell your friends and neighbors about this series. Send these things uh, to your friends that they may be blessed together with you. Pray for us until we meet next time. God bless you. Show Me God Ministries. Advancing the Three Angels Message Digitally.